Hello everyone, my name is Pacha and welcome back to a new episode of Wahad Jamila, our desert zoo here in Planet Zoo of course, as you have probably guessed already. And today it is an exciting day because we are building, or I should say I am building for my last animal for the zoo and people who are wondering why did he say his last animal they didn't, probably didn't don't know, which some of you of, or of course already know, that I have a guest builder for the zoo with the lovely and talented Mr. Gecko, who has asked me to, yeah, or who asked me if he could build something for the zoo, and he will bring in one or two more new animals, and even I don't have a clue what these animals are. I know of one of them, but I won't spoil it here. And the other ones, uh, he's, because he said he will bring multiple in, um, are totally also a surprise for me. So we both, we all have to uh, discover together what these animals are and what a an amazing creation he has, yeah, constructed over the last weeks already. Um, once he is finished with that, I'm really looking forward to that. And once he yeah, has placed his creation in Wajamila. This park will be de facto be finished, um, at least for now, and will be available for you guys on the workshop. But um, then of course I will also make a small tour showing everything and then upload it to the workshop. But I say so far or be finished to so far because if we get some more African animals in the future, if we get some more desert animals in the future, and um, we of course can always come back to this park and add them here because they yeah, naturally really fit in to that area. But today we are not building really for a desert animal, we are building more for a wetlands animal, for an animal that lives in the more yeah, humid parts of um, of Egypt I think and also of the all, uh, whole um, North African region, the Nile Monitor. We are talking about uh, an animal that was suggested by one of my livestream viewers when I asked for a yeah, species that I could add to this park, apart from the ones from, of course, the Arid Animal DLC. And they suggested Lion Monitor, and I thought, yeah, that, that's a very fitting one because I also, well, we don't also need a big, ink, a big backstage area. We don't need any heated pools, any heat lamps, or anything like that because of the temperature of this place. We can just have here a very rare, um, something really new for me, an outside area for a reptile, um, <laughs> or for a smaller reptile. Uh, this is something I don't see that often because of course I'm from Europe and here we yeah, naturally have to have something for the winter times for our reptiles. So building this was kind of a new thing to me, but I think in the end, as you always saw a few moments of it in the intro, um, I think I, in the end I really nailed it and I'm really happy how it turned out and how it fits in with the whole cheetah rocks and whole copier rock dried riverbed area of the rhinos and the cheetahs and we also have some yeah habitat immersion reverse habitat immersion here with these rock steps or these rock claddings that also go into the habitat so yeah but of course we are also not here to talk about the big uh, well we are not here to talk about the habitat itself because this is pretty self-explanatory nothing new here nothing really big surprising but what is surprising is that we get a new DLC soon and I have to make a disclaimer here when you are watching this video or when this video goes live on Wednesday we already almost all, all know already about the DLC and the update and everything like that and um, I'm recording this voice over here and also the showcase later on in the video I'm recording this on Monday so we are right after we had the live stream on Monday um, where they gave us some hints about the, up, about the DLC and some info about the update. I'm recording this then. So at this moment when I'm recording this I have still as much of a clue as anyone had at this point. Um, meaning probably a lot already about the DLC. But of course I could be totally wrong. We all have, could have been totally wrong. So you are basically seeing yeah, into a window of the past here um, with what, what I'm yeah, going to talk about and you probably know already much more than I do and oh, I know 
already much more than I do well, than I did when I'm I'm recording this. It is confusing for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, future, future patcher will know what's a DLC, what's update contains in total. Um, and patcher that is now recording this doesn't. So let's talk about what I know and what I think about what I know and what I don't know. So <laughs> yeah, the new update, update 1.15 and the yeah, um, thinning DLC, you see 15 are on the horizon are very close and will come to all of us very soon and so let's start with the update because we know things for sure for the update and these are two things we know that we get a new viewing opportunity for our guests with these i don't know how the f uh, specific term is i would call them dome viewing indoor habitat dome viewing so these little domes that you can that you see in habitats where you can crawl into a tunnel and then pop out in the middle of the habitat in this glass dome surrounded by the am animals around you. Mostly I saw this with um, prairie dogs or with meerkats, something like that. We are getting this now in the game uh, and it works like the restaurants. So you have like an entrance building and then you have like the, with the tables you have these domes um, that you can place and then connect to the building. and the guests will enter this entrance building and then teleport to the domes. They also walk underwater, which is really cool. So you can make some cool underwater areas, maybe with some crocodiles or something like that. Bake and, pl and play actually um, came up with this crocodile underwater viewing idea. And yeah, this is something I'm really happy about it because it gives us more interaction with the guests, more interaction with the animals and guests because um, some of the animals also See, uh, the, at least that is what Frontier said in the live stream. That some of the animals react to the guests in the dome. So really looking forward to how that works and their, um, how what I can do with that. And if I have to redo some uh, exhibits in some of my zoos, that was since uh, when we get that. And the second thing we know, or I know at this point, um, is that we get brachiation for orangutans. And I'm not a big orangutan builder. I think I have built for them once or twice in my whole plant zoo ca career, which is now over four years long. Um, but I'm all for it. People asked for it. People, ple yeah, people asked Frontier uh, over and over for the, this. Um, and finally we get it and it looks amazing. They did whole new animations for the orangutan because of course it's a big animal. It's not like a Simon or, or a La Gibbon. And they, what I saw, we saw in these short clips on the live stream looked really amazing. Had a lot of weight to it, and yeah, a lot of majest, majestic uh, movements and such. It was really cool, and I'm looking very forward to it. Maybe I will build full rank tanks now, since we got they get more of a yeah more agility and more uh, life to them. But let's talk about what we're all waiting for: the DLC, and. Totally unexpected, um, for maybe not for all of you, but for at least uh, a lot of people, we are getting not uh, autumn themed DLC like we did in the last years. We are getting another tropical DLC with potentially an island pack. I will call it like that Oceana island pack. And uh, Plan Zoo stream was about making these cocktails or mocktails. And yeah, all of these uh, cocktails had something to do with the animals we get. We had five cocktails and some characteristics. And the animals, as at least uh, as, as I know now and uh, as I could suspect, um, could uh, theorize about what we have now are the Tasmanian Devil, the Kiwi, the uh, Fairy Blue Penguin or mm, Dwarf Penguin. I don't know what the specific term is. And... The last one was either the quokka or the tree kangaroo, but I think the quokka is more likely because of all the whole uh, yeah, emphasis on smiling and such. And and then an exhibit animal, which I don't know, but some said lorikeet. Maybe that's correct. You will know once this video is out, probably. And yeah, this is what we can expect from this DUC, um, which is interesting. And... Honestly, my honest opinion first was that I wasn't really happy about it. And now this will shock some people. What? We are getting finally the Tasmanian Devil and he's not happy about it. Yeah. Um, I was never one of those people that um, religiously prayed for the uh, Tasmanian Devil to come to this game. I, I think they are cool animals. I have never seen one in real life. Um, but I think they are cool animals from what I know. But I, I never was some of the people who couldn't... Yeah, 
end this game without a Tasmanian Devil because I have no connection to it. But um, in general, the animals are really cool. Um, my also my initial reaction wasn't wasn't really happy because after all this Wajamila building that we did over the last almost three months now, I was really happy to get back to Raven Creek, my main series, my North American European main series, and this pack. Wasn't really what I what I expecting, and this is totally fine. Frontier is yeah has is a, is a master in giving us the unexpected, unexpected, and they are providing us or um, bringing in animals that we no one would have expected to get. And I was yeah, I tapped into this trap basically and expected an a temperate autumn theme pack, a temperate forest pack, which would have of course given us the animals that I can't use in this pack. Because I also saw the Tasmanian Devil appear in a in a temperate forest pack, but I also expected some animals that would be of use in Raven Creek, and I was really happy to get back into that park after so many mini zoo building and everything like that. And now <laughs> I have to think about it: what I do for this new pack. And you probably will find out next week or whenever I. Uh, f have a solution for what I do with these animals and some people suggested making an Oceana Island area in Raven Creek, but uh, I'm not so sure I'm not too happy about this idea But I will keep it in mind if nothing else pops up. Maybe another mini zoo uh, re Emphasis on really mini zoo because we only will build them for four animals and an exhibit animal um, But we will see I have still have to brainstorm a little bit, but in general and this, of course, shouldn't be the reason I don't like a pack, be just because I can't use it in my main zoo. Um, this is, I think, a me, more a me problem than anything else. And I'm re still really happy about the pack. And, and I'm really curious about what exhibit animal we got, because if it's really lorikeets or budgies or any bird-like animal, um, this would really change the game and yeah, maybe makes this pack a whole lot better for me. And also about the scenery that we are getting, because this is, will probably be a scenery pack um, and yes, more island themed scenery. Because scenery, the scenery in this game is never always only for one for only for one reason or for only for one theme. You can always mix and match different pieces to fit different themes. And this, this, this could be something that would work um, even in other zoos that are not themed after islands. So really looking forward to that. You guys are lucky you probably already know what I can expect and future me is already also know. But at the moment as I'm here, um, I, yeah, I'm yeah i really looking forward to what we maybe see tomorrow on Tuesday or for you yesterday on Tuesday. Uh, time is confusing. Um, what we see and what we will learn about the update and the DLC and why they didn't show us the update they are a day prior to the DOC, uh, DOC announcement, so which is something they only did back then with the conservation pack. Uh, really curious about that. But anyway, <laughs> enough of me of talking. Um, we are now finishing this little, yeah, it's a little fake building, um, basically to have a reason to have a shade over the underwater viewing area. Uh, I created this little fake building. Um, Mostly also so to set this, this, the, the scene and to have this transition between the rocky area back to the more city uh, developed area of this park. So basically have a better transition between these two. I have this fake building. It, maybe it could also be something like, like a keeper hut or like a tool shed. I don't know. It's, it, at the moment it's only there so that, that I could um, fit my shade onto, onto some yeah, surface basically. <laughs> but anyway, I will leave you now with the rest of this speed build where we are finishing the outside area with all the planting and all the decoration and stuff. And then I will see you in the real time part. At the end of the video where we look at the whole building in total and yeah, talk about it then. So enjoy the rest of the video, enjoy some music and then I see you in the showcase.
All right, here we are now in the real time part, standing in front or on the side <laughs> of our rhino and sheet habitat. There they are. Hello. And now we have this corner of the zoo complete with the addition of the new Nile monitor habitat. And yeah, we also have this central part now complete uh, with some rocks, with some vases or vases, I don't know, some pottery, some trees. And yeah, um, it's really it's a small habitat. It's a simple habitat, I would say. And we have one viewing area where a monitor is doing weird things over there. I don't know. <laughs> where you can get a look at the land part, mainly at the land part of the exhibit. And I don't know what is he do doing. Um, <laughs> I don't ask it. Um, getting here from the yeah, viewing area of the Sheeta place, you get to this little area where you can look at the monitor sleeping most likely in front of you. They can even go up to this little rock over here. I placed some enrichment over there so that they will most likely go up there. So, um, yeah, really nice. And if you follow this path down here, past this scenery hut, <laughs> basically, you get to the underwater viewing. Sadly, at the moment as it is, the Nymonter has no deep water diving or anything like that uh, on like the Asian water monitor. Maybe it's something that gets added in the future. Who knows, even the orangutan received brachiation as we know. But yeah, so far it's a nice underwater viewing. They can come up, up to the cl uh, glass very close. So you can see them underwater swimming over here, which I think is a very nice addition for Asian water monitors. There they are. <laughs> they still look cool. They, they still look really cool despite being a base game animals and most of the later animals having a more higher quality to them. But they are very simple. Um, you can also sit on these little benches over here, having a nice view at the monitors, which I think is really nice. Some enrichment. And yeah, if we now go through this wall, like a Harry Potter character or over the wall, another <laughs> Wahad Jamila episode where I land on a roof <laughs> we get to the backstage area which isn't fully finished yet i know i still have to do them but i'm landing on a roof again <laughs> we go quickly through here we have a little backstage i finished this backstage area here um with two cages where we could keep the mud water monitors the nine monitors which are water monitors i guess uh, we keep them for yeah, veterinary purposes, for sleeping purposes, for separation purposes, some equipment to care for the animals. And then of course the keeper door over here to get outside and to yeah, tent the exhibit or the habitat. Laying on the roof again, my goodness, what this episode. <laughs> but yeah, really simple. Um, if I'm not landing on the roof, <laughs> really simple habitat. Um, Still love the use of these um, mud walls, rock walls to frame the whole thing. And then going over here to the more, yeah, urban area with the, with the, with the brickwork and the mud walls and everything like that. So it kind of has a nice transition between the rocky area and the more urban area over there. And then, of course, this empty space will be filled by... Mr. Gecko's creation in the future, hopefully soon, and then we have the full zoo complete. So yeah, really quick um, overview over the habitat. And as, as as always, if you enjoy this video, maybe consider giving it a like. And if, of course, if you haven't already, maybe consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss any video in the future. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I can't wait to see what the new new scenes and new update brings alongside the stuff we already talked about. Leave down in the comments what are you most excited for in the new DLC, what animals are you most excited for, what up features are you most excited for and we can discuss about this uh, over there. And then I hope I see you in the next episode and until then stay safe, have a great time, enjoy life and Bye-bye, everyone.